I've got Eric with Elocraft, and we're gonna talk about updates to the K4, K4 HD line. Yeah, K4 yep. to K4 HD, but also uh, some new remote stuff with right. K4 Zero, some updates on that, and uh, also some uh, Apple uh, Mac, MacBook or Macintosh and iOS uh, iPad software from Marcus Roshkosh. So we're going to cover all of those. Awesome. Let's let's get to it. So okay. Thanks for your time today. Okay, I'll walk you through the stuff here. First, we'll talk about remote a little bit. Uh, you know, we can. Oh, we've had out for some time the ability for one K4 to control another K4. Uh -huh. So you literally can control your friend's radio if he has bigger antennas than you have and you want to work the DX on his, his station, you can hit a button and connect almost instantaneously over the internet. That's been built into all K4s so you can have a server side or a client in, in, independent of you using the radio normally. So it's, you can even share it and teach people. The guys have shared their radio and showing someone else how to use his K4 totally. and stuff remotely. Yeah. So that's already been there, but I'll show you um, all of our remote stuff, though, going from portable stuff, because that's mm -hmm. obviously what we all care about. Okay. But most people are caring about now, I'm going to start on the right. This is our, our K4, actually, we went over here, K, the K4 is zero, which means no RF inside. Uh -huh. um, we've had this, uh, we were showing the static version last of data that wasn't fully running. This is fully running now. Mm -hmm. you now, for instance, I can go over here and connect, uh, bring up a little connection window and connect to, I've got a, a unit here that I can connect to, so let me connect to that. And now we're getting it real time coming in. Mm -hmm. And that's now coming over the, the network. Nice. I've got a little Wi-Fi antenna on the back here you can see. Mm -hmm. So it has Wi-Fi and Ethernet interface, all the same I.O. like you have on a K4, so you can put your compute desk computer or, or whatever next to it for logging or WSJT, mm -hmm. built-in sound card, all the usual stuff. Yeah. Okay. We also have a battery option for this too. Oh, do you really? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that, uh, or you can power it um, off of also USB C yeah. from a wall wart, like charging your iPad, right? Yeah. Like a 30 watt wall wart. That's neat. So you don't have to carry any big stuff around to run it. Right. And also, I, I can take like a one of those 10,000 milliamp hour uh, power banks, mm -hmm. plug yeah. that into it, run three and a half hours off of that. Oh, nice. And we also have okay. internal batteries that will give you about the same amount of time. Okay. Built in charging. But basically, 100% K4 stuff. I mean, tuning the radio, mm -hmm. able to tune stuff in. In, change bands. I think we 40 meters is alive. Where let's see, I was 40. We go 20. Hmm. And I should let's see. 20 was quiet there in California right now. Yeah, a little <laughs> early down, 40 down that part of the band. Huh. But uh, go back on uh, here. Uh, where we go here on this station. Go back to seven. Yeah, they're awake there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 40's awake. Yeah, 40's alive. Yeah, I've been controlling my home station. So uh -huh. out in Monterey Bay. We're out here in Orlando, so it's cross country. Yeah. Um, so this is fully working. I actually have a microphone I was plugging into it earlier. Okay. I was showing it to a customer uh, early on, and we heard a guy calling CQ, and I pulled him up. Let's give him a call. I plugged the microphone in, gave him a call. Oh, nice. And I said, well, he says, where are you? He said, well, I'm in Orlando, Florida <laughs> right now, but my transmitter's in California off Monterey Bay. And he goes, what? <laughs> so I explained to him what we were doing. It was sort of cool. Uh, working down the line. Um, can we see the back of that real quick? Oh, yeah, is that, sure. Is that too... Yeah, I can, no, I can, I can rotate it around. I don't know if you had it plugged in or something. No, it's just like that. Yeah, there we go. So you can see the back. We've yeah. got Ethernet interface, just like on the K4, extra USB mm -hmm. inputs here. Mm -hmm. um, also over Ethernet, and mm -hmm. a lot of apps like N1MM can connect to us over, over right. the network, over Wi-Fi. I'm using Wi-Fi right now. Mm -hmm. Or if you plug in here, you can run over hardwired Internet. Power I mean, poles for power, that's neat. That's, I like that, that. that's always there just as yeah. legacy if people have it in their house and they want to plug sure. it. Sure. It'll yeah. run off 12 volts there. Yeah. Um, with the 30 watt uh, wall wards, they negotiate a voltage, you know, okay. power delivery on, yeah. on right. USB C. Right. Um, it runs 15 volts at, and with like a, that gets two amps mm -hmm. on that. But if you're going to charge the internal batteries, because it can run the radio and charge the internal batteries at the mm -hmm. same time, that's mm -hmm. an option for add on batteries. Okay. That um, requires a 45 watt one. So, but oh. they're all small. Like I get the anchor ones that are really small. Yeah. The little, little yeah. Ga gallium arsenide ones are really efficient, don't get hot. Mm -hmm. I love those. And, uh, all the standard, you know, paddle keyer, all the stuff that we have on a, on a, on a K4. Even mm -hmm. a little bit of that. If you if you aren't gonna, I wouldn't necessarily load it up heavily if you're on batteries, but you can power a, a, an adjacent uh, 12 volt device sure. from that yeah. there. Okay. So that's all, all pretty cool. Of course, external speakers, headphones on the back, and also mic and stuff on the. And front. it looks like you've got some expansion plans here for no, USB that actually um, no that that was uh, just two extra ports. We didn't need those. So actually, this is old sheet metal. Oh, okay. So it's still got okay. those holes. Those are going away. <laughs> okay, those are going away. Okay, but we got good. Th th those two plus. Um, you've got with the USB-B connection, that just goes to your laptop. Say you've got with WSJT on right. for, right. Uh, for you know, FT8 or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, that has a virtual sound card and two virtual COM ports inside. 
and good. they're independent. The two COM ports don't see the response from the other ones. Oh, well, that's good. So you have different apps talking to us at the same time. Gotcha. And stuff. Okay. So that's that's sort of cool. Cool. Okay. So that is the ultimate little portable guy here. We're gonna yeah. have a portable padded carrying case for it. Oh, too, nice. So. Very cool. So this okay. guy, um, we're going in field test right now with it. I've got uh, 25 of them going out to uh, guys in the next uh, 60 days or so. Okay. And. They'll be testing through that and hopefully start taking orders right around by Celia, which is in April. Okay. Um, okay. Pre-orders will start shipping for volume. Um, mm -hmm. I've actually ordering the volume material right now, like sheet metal, the long lead time stuff, right? Yeah, now. yeah. Um, we use a standard K4 front panel, by the way, so that's just the same off the production line. Either goes on a K4 or on a K4-0. Okay. So it's Good. sort of eerie that you've got this little box that feels just like a K4, but your K4 is back home in California right. or yeah, wherever, totally. wherever it might okay. be. All right. So other stuff, we've had BK4 under development, had a little delay on that one, so that's still a little bit out over the summer here, getting okay. that one out for, okay. for Windows remote control. Mm -hmm. It does work, but I got just like 90% there, we have to do a final tweak, and I have a, a new engineer that's also coming in to help on this. Okay. These are really cool. This is uh, actually going to be on the Apple um, App Store in about mm -hmm. two weeks. Uh, Marcus Roshkosh from Germany, who's done remote control apps for uh, everything from ICOM to mm -hmm. ASU, uh, flex radio. Yep. Yep. Um, he does the flex radio stuff. one. Yep. I, he sent me a, he sent me a key for his icon one. Yep. He, he just got that one out. With the 705. Yeah. yeah so, so he's done a great job. Mm -hmm. Well, he's got I've got it working from him for Mac. He, he's done it for um, you know I, uh, Mac Mac software. Yeah. Mac me. OS. So this Mac is a Mac OS here. This is a Mac Book Air. Mm -hmm. He requires the iOS 17, I think, or later, or Mac or whatever they call it the, for, Mac, yeah. for MacBook. Um, and this is iPad, so I can disconnect this from power. I'm running Wi-Fi here now. And that's control. My station on 10 meters in California, I've got a neighbor that has some kind of interference on 10 meters. The van's not open yet at this time of the day in California. This it's, is all uh, just RFI from a neighbor. Yeah, it's about, it's about, it's about 16, um, I mean, uh, about uh, 6 o'clock in the morning in California. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But uh, full control, you tune the radio. He's, uh, there's a guy that makes, uh, they call the CTR MIDI, I think it is, uh, CTR2 MIDI knob. Mm -hmm. And you can you run that and control it and do CW and stuff on it. Too. Oh, nice. Okay. And okay. Um, I'm going to talk. I try to talk Marcus into doing also his iPhone app, so you can pull it out and say, "Hey, I want to listen to my station." Sure. Yeah. He's already got the UI for it. He's supporting that on a lot of radios okay. too. All right. So good. Marcus is uh, is very well respected in the in the Mac yes. area. Yes. Yes. Which is totally. Sort of cool. Totally. So, yeah, unrelated too. to software, um, I have some hardware to talk about too. So if some, okay. The last version of the K4, which is the highest performing version. It's called the K4 HD. Mm -hmm. What we do is, in addition to having direct sampling radio capability, mm -hmm. which is wonderful sounding, low fatigue, you know, great filtering down to 50 hertz for CW, and all the, you know, all the great, um, you know, they have the CESSB on transmit, which is this new compression scheme that's much better than the old clipping style RF compression. Yeah. yeah. With less distortion too, people don't even know I have it on, I have like a 6 to 8 dB mm -hmm. increase. Even the review for the K4 said that from the ARRL. Was, oh, well that's good. They were blown away. <laughs> was, yeah. And uh, we always keep tweaking that, even making it better. The um, K4 HD adds a K3S style front end on the radio, low phase noise, local oscillators, crystal filters. Mostly to cover it when you have the neighbor down the block about a block away running a kilowatt oh. in the same band, mm -hmm. just killing you with you know and desensing your radio basically mm -hmm. is one of the main things it covers. But all, it also upgrades everything on the on the receive path in terms of dynamic range. Mm -hmm. So we actually have real boards that are working, and we are inside K4s right now. I'm doing the final development on those, and these are also going to be. Um, getting very close to going into production. I'm okay. Mostly it's a software thing here. My software engineer's off getting married right now. So, <laughs> so I've well, got a several week delay on getting the final software that controls it then, that we're controlling it in the lab right now. Okay. And a good example of the kind of numbers we're getting is we've now got a blocking dynamic range, which is desense immunity. It takes a signal now 100, more than 140 dB above, that's huge, wow. above your noise floor to cause even a minor amount of compression of the receiver oh. and de minor desense. So the guys on field day that put their antenna too close to you. Right. If yeah. you guys have used K3's portable, this gets you the same, you know, for those kind of events or yeah. expeditions, Good. it's wonderful. Is that gonna be an add-on that people can add themselves? You can add, you can always okay. upgrade from the next lower. So you have to have a K4D to use this. Okay. Because okay. we still use the um, the uh, the direct sampling stuff for the pan adapters. Mm -hmm. Watch out, you're going to be on camera here. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. We had someone no, looking at the board. No, you weren't in there actually. So okay. You're good. Yeah, we are open to the show here, so everything's <laughs> everything's live. Right. Um, so this is the K4D. Okay. And um, we, we supply it with a single crystal filter per main and sub receiver. But basically, you've got full capability. You can turn it on and off literally with a button as mm -hmm. you're listening to a station. Because th there's uh, you know on, on field day you might leave it on more often if you have a guy didn't get yeah. the antennas far away from you. For, yeah. Because a lot of guys will operate you know. CW, digital, and sideband all at the same time. Mm -hmm. 
Well, yeah. This is the front end for you for that. Is it? Nice. K4s okay. do real well in that environment, but some people can't get the antennas far enough apart, you know, in a field day situation. Mm -hmm. So this buys you that extra deal. Or if you have verticals on the beach for a de expedition, that's a big deal. But Good. also Good. In, in you know urban environments where you got a lot of yeah. people nearby you. It, yeah. It just buys that extra edge. Mm -hmm. And uh, K4 HD has this installed already. Okay. But it basically it's two cards. Uh, we add one more analog to digital converter that goes after these crystal filters to do the final filtering. So even if you have like a a sideband bandwidth filter in here, you can narrow it down on CW down to 50 hertz. Mm -hmm. Or you can put a 500 hertz filter in here too and still keep going down, but it's your choice. Nice. But you can switch between two on each receiver. This is a working board. Um, and we've got them in the lab. They have a few, they're a little bit uglier in the labs. We made a few minor optimizations on the back of the board. And that, that's getting turned right now for the final circuit board also. So I'm pushing as hard as I can to have these things shipping also before Dayton, if we can get before them out. Before Dayton, might, yeah. okay. Okay. You never might have a surprise, but yeah. a little bit. But it's it's doing very well for us. So these are these are real. Yeah. And uh, but you can upgrade basically always from a K4, which has got uh, one antenna path in analog to digital or slice, if you want to call it, it's mm -hmm. one of our competitors' terms. And it or um, a K4D, you can upgrade to from that mm -hmm. by adding another one of those and an extra front end band pass filter. Mm -hmm. HD, you add another one, <laughs> mm -hmm. and also this board. And this goes gotcha. in the right hand side in the front of the radio, plugs in. No soldering or anything. This is this is just mechanical assembly yeah. upgrade. So that's the main main step we've got at the show. That's cool. new. Of yep. course, we got the KH ones, KX twos. Mm -hmm. Those those are just flying off the shelf. So that's keeping us really busy. With I noticed you had K two kits over there. Yeah, we've been selling the original K two. Original K two. Original K two that uh, Wayne and I designed back in 1998. Yeah. Started selling in 1999. That's a long more than 26 years ago. Yeah. Um, and we've had that the whole time. That's the only full solder HF. Uh, kit you can buy. Okay. It's, a, it's a 10 watt uh, QRP radio. Mm -hmm. You can use our KXPA100 for 100 watts on it, and mm. that'll follow you around anywhere. Yeah. But good performance radio blew people away. It was a kit that actually worked better than the commercial radios at the time. <laughs> that was 20 years ago, but still. <laughs> right. You know, obviously, we've eclipsed that with the K3 and the, and the K4. Sure. But you know, when you build it, it has to work better, right? You, Absolutely. You tell all your friends. That's, Absolutely. And it that's keeps true. going. <laughs> so it's the, it's the, it's the uh, kit that keeps on giving. The kit here. that keeps. <laughs> that's good. That's yeah. good. Eric, I hope you have a good show. Thanks okay, for your time Jason, today. Thanks yep. a lot. Thanks a lot. Take it easy. Appreciate it. Bye.